<laughs> I've been invited to a Star Trek Museum exhibit grand opening today, but I don't have anything Star Trek-y to wear. I suppose I could wear this again, since it's a red shirt. I do still have my red shirt cologne. I need a replicator. I may be building one soon. Today I was also invited to a 3D printer building camp. Imagine being able to print out as many Star Wars things as I want! What else would you use a 3D printer for? Apart from building a turn signal that you forgot to use. The thing that strikes me the most odd about downtown Seattle is that I think we have more trees here than actual buildings. for my cousin's graduation this weekend, and I saw this one. Do you dare me to flip a switch? Okay. I flipped two. Four. Batteries may not be included. This is an exhibit that looks at 50 years of the franchise, from its origins up to the present day. Early production materials, the very first scripts, some concept drawings of the bridge and the ships. This is a cardboard model of the original set that the 60s show was filmed on. So um, the producers and directors would use this to kind of plan their shooting day. And so if, if, if anyone is wondering what the Enterprise really looked like, this is what the Enterprise really, really looked like. Uh, this was stage nine at Desilu Studios. So this is an original cardboard model that they use, or it is, is it recreation? It is. Stuff? 50 years old. Yeah. Okay. This is made by the uh, production designer, Matt Jeffries, who the Jeffries tube is named after. And we did make it big enough so that an adult can go through without getting on their hands and knees. I wouldn't even have to duck. <laughs> Star Trek was produced at Desilu Studios. Lucille Ball actually had a huge role in bringing Star Trek to life. They thought the production costs were way too high. Uh, Lucio Ball overrode them and said, no, this is an important thing we need to do here, so we're going to go ahead with it. So honestly, without Lucio Ball, no start. There are certain spots where you can see the paint's been chipped away, and you can see layer on layer of paint. We wanted to create this center that's sort of like a starship, and then these outer areas, which are like alien worlds. So like the crew, you start with the starship, and you go out to explore. That's what the stories did. I mean, since Star Trek was a utopia, not a lot of stories happen on Earth because there's no drama in the utopia. So in terms of the original series, where it all began in 1966, this is the heart of it. Um, everything you see here is from that show. Chekhov sat here close to me, and Sulu sat over there. And these are, uh, that's a Kirk tunic. Some more uh, control pieces, including the self-destruct mechanism there. So don't touch that. Deep Space Nine was probably one of my favorite Star Trek series. There's a clear message from the creator saying, we're gonna get past this conflict we're in now, and we're gonna, it's a good thing for us all to cooperate as well. And it keeps moving because there's so much to see. Communicator, tricorder, phaser, there are only two phasers left in existence in the world. Two? Uh, yeah, two, from the original series. These are very special to me. So that's why I made this little New York. People want to have a moment, <laughs> you know? <laughs> With the objects there. Yeah. We pretend it's a step, but, but really it's something else entirely. <laughs> you can go in the booth and watch the clip, and then you can do the scream, and then it makes a little movie that inserts you into the scene with Ricardo Montalban um, doing the thing. I'm pretty sure you can do better than that too, can't you? Oh, no. <laughs> So that concept art is from Wrath of Khan in the 80s. But you can see how they really drew on it to create this costume for, uh, for um, Cumberbatch. This is from the scene when he uh, is on Klingon, uh, Kronos, the Klingon homeworld. And also you can see how like the collar, the ribbed collar, they were definitely referencing the original costume way back when. 
Is that the Forge's visor? Yes, yes. Uh, it's the uh, first two seasons. And um, the Forge is an interesting character <clears throat> because I, I feel like he represents another foray into the diversity story on Star Trek in that he is blind, someone we would today consider disabled. Uh, but in that picture, the technology allows him to, to overcome that in interesting ways. That's the trouble with Tribbles. Is it weird for me to say that I actually want to touch that one? He and Captain Kirk had this big fight uh, out in the desert. They filmed it in an area called the Vasquez Rocks near Los Angeles. And um, countless TV shows and films reference their fight and they'll go out and film there. So like Bill and Ted have a fight out there. Uh, you see it in um, Big Bang Theory. Is that the original mask though? Yeah, yeah. Um, that was designed by Wa Chang. He did the creature, a lot of creature stuff for the original, original series. Ford Cube and the Phoenix Starship, or our test warp ship from First Contact. This is from the very first episode when the, in Next Generation, when they encounter the Borg, and the Borg cut a piece of the Enterprise, like a core sample, out. And so you can see they have little chairs and tables, and, and, and it's like a tiny uh, Enterprise Patrick Stewart's head appliance when he became Locutus. In uh, Best of Both Worlds. Yeah. And we have a couple regeneration chambers and a, and a great war costume in one. I'm going to regenerate. Why was it my favorite? I like that they took it across the galaxy outside of the regular. Um, areas that we've been seeing, so it was all new aliens, it was all new challenges, and that they were cut off from the support of Starfleet and the Federation, mm -hmm. and it, so it really turned up the heat on the tough decisions they had to make in order to survive. All the other decks in the show were 12 inches up, but we gave the fans 18 inches, because they need to tower over everybody. I need a bat left. The training teachers to use this to teach their students about rising actions, antagonists, antagonists, reversals, things like that, but through a fun Star Trek way. Star Trek has penetrated into our culture and our popular culture so deeply, such that everybody knows all these phrases, like, beat me up, the more speed. Those are actually models used. And so in this interactive, you can learn about different parts of the this is a local thing, Trek in the Park. It's a pre-summer adaptations of Star Trek episodes. The studio wanted their headquarters to look like a Star Trek starship because he wanted his employees to, to be inspired by that spirit of Star Trek every time they came to work. Um, this is totally one of my favorites. Okay? This is from a Red Sox game. They had Star Trek Night. This go for their Portland based Klingon battle uh, band. Life forms. Those tiny little life forms. <laughs> Dad likes the original series. I never really got into the cartoon. I enjoyed The Next Generation when I was in college. Really liked Deep Space Nine. Really liked Voyager. And didn't really get into Enterprise. I've seen these before. There! The good news is this exhibit is going to be running through February, so Dad's going to be able to see it here in a few months. He'll probably enjoy it more than I did, and I enjoyed it. I could probably go back and experience that 1,701 more times. We are waiting on Abuelita. We're just watching the cars go by. Here comes a big one. Well, of course I'm wearing Darth Vader. What else did you expect? Star Wars is fantasy and Star Trek is sci-fi. They are not mutually exclusive. Thanks for taking a second right now to tap the like button before you watch our next story and for interacting with us across social every day. Your support is always appreciated and if you'd like for us to keep sharing our daily story with you, we hope you pledge on geekfamilyfun.com. You'll get even more of what you love from us. Advanced screenings, behind the scenes, and most importantly, you'll ensure that we can keep doing this for you. See you tomorrow.